A little break from rostering for a little TFGO action. You can't beat it. So I wanted to, we didn't actually preview Goose's Broncos the last time we played him. So he's got a good young quarterback. Run game, whatever. We don't ever actually care about running backs. Uh, he's got Judy and Sutton, just like real life. The TFGO Broncos followed suit. Uh, so we do have some good receivers to deal with and Noah Fant. He loves to go to Noah Fant, so we definitely want to cover him up. Um, left tackle, no specific weakness. Finesse with Dalton Rissner. Balanced center. Finesse with the guard. So the guards are going to deal with finesse either way, so it doesn't really matter. Jedrick Wills is balanced. Uh, as far as the pass rush goes, geez, John Franklin Myers has really developed 90 power moves. More of a run stuffer in the nose. And then he does have some good linebackers. He signed Shaquille Quarterman, who's turned into a monster in this league. Bradley Chubb. Good defense. With the corners, he's got some speed, but their coverage ratings are not much to speak of. So, not too scared of the corners. And then safeties are good. So good balance defense. No, no real uh, holes in this roster. I think Goose has done a good job building this roster up. Thanks for the update, Ryan Rain. Maybe one of our moderators in the Discord can uh, take a look into that. I am, I am not very good at uh, coding that kind of thing. I think the the the, um, the moderators in Discord have handled that. Yeah, we got about 50 players left. Now the tricky thing is we just hit. We just hit the um, we just hit the maximum players created, so we can no longer use the creation menu. So we have to overwrite rookies moving forward. So it shouldn't slow us down too much, but um, how long have I been editing players for? Well, I've made it through pretty much the entire Dallas Cowboys season, so that's two hours a game. I think I'm on the 14th season. So starting, I started on Thursday, closing in on probably 40 hours. I haven't always been watching the Cowboys. Sometimes I've been listening to podcasts. But so far it's been probably 40 hours, which is a lot. And I got probably another five or six hours to go. All right, Goose, good luck, have fun. Um, yeah, we don't have abilities turned on, bro, but we have a uh, and I'm calling you bro because I'm not about to say that nickname. HD, HD, D, HD, XBD. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that. Um, sorry, I'm just, I'm, I gotta send this message here. I got a uh, college football guy that's gonna help, help create some rookies while I play. Okay. I let to I signed a pre on the edge, but let Matthew go. Yes, um, Matthew is too expensive. I picked up Bud Dupree as a preseason free agent, so he was he came at no expense. But yeah, I let I let Tyron Matthew go.
I couldn't afford them. I still had to deal with the Frank Clark contract at that time. I signed Chris Jones, so I, uh, I definitely could not afford him anymore. D. Yeah, that'd be a dream if uh, if PS4 could get the roster as well. Get the first. All right, first, all right, third and one. I had to pay Mahomes like six. It, it's like. Forty million a year, basically. Nice run. A lot of things are impossible for EA. Unfortunately. All right, Kentrell Ramsey. Mexi because I don't really look at that. I mean, they're they're paying Andy Dalton or they're paying Dak Prescott thirty six million dollars this year. They're paying Andy Dalton seven million. <laughs> they're still paying Dak Prescott plenty of money. They did agree to terms on a, like technically Dak hasn't signed his tender yet, so yes, technically they agreed to terms, but. How long does each new player take? Uh, somewhere between five and 15 minutes, it varies. Sometimes I need to do a little digging, recap, recap on my evaluation. Sometimes I don't have to do as much. Five, no, I would say it takes at least 10 minutes a player. I don't think I've gotten anyone done in five minutes. Maybe some of the offensive linemen, because they don't have a lot of ratings to do. But it's not just creating them. I've got to sign them as a 75 overall punter. i got to reduce their kick power. If you're creating them, i got to reduce their throw power. There's a lot of different things to do. You're not. It's not as simple as signing them in free agency and then rating them. Like, because I can't edit contracts, I have to sign them as a punter. And then I obviously don't want them to have punting ability. So they're gonna go in, make them a punter, change their punting ratings, back out, sign them as a punter, go in, change their, change their kick ratings, go back, change them to their position. There's a lot of different stuff to do. If they're a defensive player, I gotta change them to an offensive lineman so I can edit their impact block rating because that changes. Impact block rating changes how much they end up on their ass. A lot of different intricacies that nobody else is doing, I can tell you that much. I'd be surprised if there's any community roster editors that are changing the impact block ratings of defensive players. Because it doesn't show up in the menu, right? Throw it! What the? Good lord. I just wanted to get rid of it. <laughs> Pringle be a decent receiver? Uh, maybe, I don't know. He's fine. He's a, he's a like, tenacious player. I doubt the Chiefs have long-term plans for him. God, Miko Hardman just continues to have a dominant season. He's been so good for me. I'm definitely going to do a little... Um, just a short little video podcast, like a little 10-minute thing. 
reviewing my uh, my thoughts on the Cowboys because I'm rewatching their entire season right now and it's interesting. What player have I had the hardest time scouting? Um, it's a good question. Jalen Hurts was a tough eval because so much of that is improv and good play design. Cam Akers was a tough eval because he really did not have very good blocking. Honestly, Tua. Tua is an incredibly difficult eval because 90% of his throws don't do anything for me. He's just throwing to wide open receivers or his receivers are making crazy plays. And he has all day to throw. Quarterbacks are always going to be the hardest evals. Okay, Tyreek. Okay. Are Herbert and Easton the same overall? No, I think uh, Herbert's a 65. I think Easton's a 64. I could be wrong. They might be the same overall. Because the thing is, Easton's actually more accurate than Herbert, in my opinion. Herbert's a little faster, though, but their awareness is both garbage. Will the salary cap be impacted by all the shutdown business? Um, I don't believe so. Hey, 65 is higher than I had Daniel Jones last year. I bet EA is going to have him around the same, same mark. Yeah, dude, Justin Fields... He's one of those quarterbacks that needs to see it before he throws the ball. Just doesn't throw with a lot of anticipation for me. Oh, jeez. Mecole's down now. Yikes. I released that thing hoping Miko was going to work back to me, and he absolutely did not. <laughs> As a roster maker, I understand how Daniel, jo how Tyree Jackson ended up above Daniel Jones, because they both have bad awareness, right? They both have bad awareness. They're not, neither of them were, oh God, Miko has shoulder tear, ouch. Hopefully he's back for the playoffs. They both weren't particularly accurate in college, but Tyree Jackson is faster and has a much stronger arm. So even if Daniel Jones has 10 more awareness, those other things are going to make him a better overall for the scrambling archetype. Jesus Christ, what a play. Wow, I played that perfectly. I accidentally tapped A too quickly and then I intentionally hit it left. It worked out. Yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't divin into the quarterbacks next year. But from what I've seen from from Justin Fields, I'm not particularly impressed. 
tips for someone trying to start a YouTube channel. There's a sack. Well, first things first, you gotta understand Photoshop to make thumbnails and graphics, and you gotta understand Adobe Premiere. That was a huge learning curve for me for someone that didn't go to school for any of that kind of stuff. But I would start just binging tutorials and that kind of stuff. And then once you have an understanding of that, it's all work ethic. You gotta find ways to promote your channel. For me, it was my Madden roster. It's gotta be persistent. It's gonna be, sh you're not gonna make any money or get any attention at the start, but. Oh, there's a pick, Tyreek Bracey. Oh. Like, it took me a whole year to get 100 subscribers. You know? It took me a year to get 100. I think I had 1,000 by the end of year two. Then I was at 10,000. It's, it's exponential. You just can't get discouraged when your first video gets 15 views. Thoughts on the Falcons roster moves? I would say underwhelming but sustainable. I don't know if they've done enough to compete in the NFC, but they'll still be good. I haven't particularly hated anything they've done. It's just nothing's been like, oh my god, wow. They gotta stay healthy. And the defense has to step up. They need some they need some of these investments on defense to develop. Whether that's Tok McKinley or some of these young corners. Jeez, another field goal. My run game has been complete shit lately. Doc McKinley's pulling a Yannick Ngakwe. I mean, he's not exactly one of the, he's not a player that exactly has leverage. You know, if you're Jalen Ramsey and you're pissed at your organization and you're an absolute superstar and you deserve better, like, go for it, dude. Like, ask for a trade, get frustrated that they aren't paying you. But like, dude, Doc McKinley, like, what the fuck have you ever done? Like, you're a first round bust in my eyes at this point. Like, how about instead of a year out of your contract expiring, how about instead of bitching about wanting to leave, you actually show up and play? Even like Yannick Ngakwe, like, dude, you had a breakout young season. You've been a solid player since, but... Like, you're a good number two pass rusher. And that's it. Oh, oh my god, he ended up short there? Okay, he ended up getting it. I don't know what happened there. He just, like, didn't sprint after he got the ball. I don't I don't know if his controller died or what happened there, but yikes. Jonathan Taylor bailed Goose out on that one. Martinez becomes the most productive pass coverage linebacker in the NFL next year, I will delete my YouTube channel. Like, it, it's it's physically impossible for Blake to do that. He does not have the movement skills to pl play coverage in the NFL. Like, Eric Hendricks had multiple games last year with more pass breakups than Martinez has had in like his last two seasons. Blake Martinez, think about this for a second, has three pass breakups in two full seasons and he's never been hurt. He has broken up three balls in a in 2000 snaps. 
Kendricks had 14 last season. And that's not to mention how often he just gets completely roasted. And isn't even anywhere near potential pass breakups. Welcome in, Caldwell. Call, call it Will. I'm just going to call you Caldwell. Thanks for joining the stream, bro. Appreciate the kind words. Dang, nice catch, Judy. <laughs> Maxi. That's the story. That's the narrative. Get the ball out. Oh. Uh, this is year six. Drew Locke didn't pan out in this world. Seam. He loves he loves him some uh, some fan. He just threw it away. Yeah, dude, Ryan Connolly and David Mayo are way better players than Blake Martinez. Way better. Ah, good drive. Who else's draft classes would, would anyone use? Okay, Buck. TFG or bust. Teddy would be a better blade mount. <laughs> At least Teddy could like distract ball carriers with how cute he is and maybe they'd stop and let someone else get a tackle. A couple, couple Teddyless streams recently. It's been too busy sleeping with, snuggling up with mom. Second highest edge rusher, Josh Allen. Ah, didn't like what I saw. Teddy is like a little, a little monkey. Yeah, dude, Willie Gay on the Chiefs is gonna be so sick. Like, what a pick that was. Ah, oh, nice play. Oh, we keep, uh, we keep making classes. I've got um, I've got five fictional classes, and then some people in the league office have stepped up with my uh, my roster creation kit to give us some classes that play nice with with my roster. Oh, where's the flag, ref?
But yeah, up to this point, it's been uh, all of my fictional classes, which are all uploaded on the file share. Because we have... I've got a 2020, 2021, and 2022 class, and then I have two fictional classes that we've used in this, and then I've uploaded them. Stretch right. Nope. Is disabling X factors worth it? I would say in an online league, it's probably the way to go. At least until hopefully Madden 21 where they let you edit edit abilities, which blows my mind that they did not include that from the get-go. But um, it's probably the way to go. And then I like them for offline just because it gets a little, gets a little repetitive with them. And computers aren't going to abuse it. And it's just more fun. I would say use it for your offlines, but scratch them for... Boom. Got team. <laughs> Obviously, Rash I do like Tipa Galea, but Rashawn Gary's... I think Rashawn Gary's going to have a nice season. I think in year two... I think in year two, Rashawn Gary is going to take a lot more reps from uh, Preston Smith. And then I wouldn't be stunned if we saw Preston Smith end up getting traded. Because I think it was a three-year deal, and I can't imagine the third year is all that. Um... All that hard to get out of. It's pretty pretty budget-friendly contract, honestly. Packers should trade for anyone that can play slot wide receiver, but they won't. could name I actually do like Equinemius next year it's just a matter of like do they play him uh, you could name so many players that the Packers should do something to get there's so many dime a dozen slot receivers that they could have that for some reason they just have completely ne neglected some sliders uploaded. I also have a video. If you search um, if you search realistic franchise experience, I think it'll come up. Maybe someone here would be so kind to link the video. I don't know. I'm not a sliders guy. I'm a rosters guy. I have some sliders I play with, but to me, it's kind of a sliders, it's all akin to your own your own play style, your own skill level. I say just play a few games and tweak it as you go. That's kind of my approach. I don't think there's any set of sliders that are perfect. I don't even think Cooper, like, the Packers problem isn't like big bodied physical wide receivers though. Like literally all of the Packers need is a Marquise Lee or they just need someone that can be quick. Like all, literally everyone on every wide receiver they have is super slow. I don't get it at all.
And the one fast guy they have has some of the worst hands I've ever seen from a professional football player in Marquez Valdez Scantling. That's why Equinemia St. Brown is the only hope, because he's like a 4-4, four, four, or he's like a 4-5, four, 40 guy. Like, his physical comp is A.J. Green. Like he is a really good athlete. He's just very raw, and I don't know if he's a good enough player. Any good leagues for PS4? I don't know if there's any of the TFGO PS4 guys in here. I can send you a link. I mean, Coleman loves Denzel Mims, so that's not surprising. And he likes, doesn't he like that awful, he likes the Morgan guy? I mean, Jets didn't have a bad draft. I just, I wasn't so excited about it. I'll probably lose in the first round, second round jam, like I always do. I'll probably be a pretender yet again. I pray to God Marquez Valdez Scantling has just the offseason of a lifetime. I pray that he's just figuring out how to catch and can reach his potential. But, like, seriously, it's like throwing to a wall. Like, he just literally just is, his hands are inexplicably bad. Stidham's rating, I think, is currently a 61. I think I raised him a little bit. I think he was a 59. I raised him to, like, a 61. I could be wrong. If not, I plan to because the Patriots going through this whole offseason showing faith gives me a little, uh, a little more confidence in him. Nah, dude, the Pats are going to win the East next year. I'm putting a lot of money in the Pats. Nice juke. I mean, to put that in perspective, Justin Herbert was the sixth overall pick and the 65, so. He's a complete unknown. Nice. Stidham's weaknesses, he just isn't very, like, he's not a very sharp player. Like, he's kind of, I don't know if I want to say he's a first read quarterback. I don't know if that's necessarily fair. Jesus. <laughs> he had so much blocking out in front, and he took five steps backwards. I don't want to say he's a first read quarterback. He just, like, is kind of a little slow. Like, he's a bit of a reactionary quarterback instead of an anticipatory thrower. Um... But he very well could have developed that in a year under Tom Brady. And I feel like 
for the Patriots to basically not change anything and roll with him, they must have liked what they saw in, in practice. Made some, uh, you know, pressed a little bit too much. Threw some bad interceptions. He's not particularly inaccurate, though. He's a good athlete. Like, he's got a chance. Throw it away. I didn't love what I saw there. There were some moments though when I was when I was watching him watching him in his final year at Auburn that it, like Tony Romo like came to mind. He's got some. There's something in there. He's not a bad player. I still think they should have brought in like. Dalton or Case Keenum or someone as insurance because I just don't think Brian Hoyer is that guy. I have not gotten a Trey Lance yet. I will over the summer. I, I plan on actually coming into the season with a little more. Well, yeah, but Jim, you don't have to sign Andy Dalton to a three year, $70 million contract. It's not like you got a Ryan Tannehill. Patriots could very well make some noise next year with that defense if they just get competent offense. And they won... How many games did they win last year? They were one of the worst offenses in the league. The Packers slot wide receiver? Dude, I don't I don't even fucking know. I don't... I, my guess is they're not even going to run three wide. They just are going to come out with their shitty tight ends. It might be Aaron Jones. Like, literally nobody on that roster who isn't an undrafted player. Has the skill set of a slot wide receiver. I mean, Devontae Adams, like, I guess if you go three wide, you make Devontae your, your slot. But it's just dumb. It's just dumb that they don't have, like, anyone on that. I mean, the, the, the undrafted free agent they picked up out of Michigan State, he's a, he's a slot type. He's like a bigger bodied slot type. He's like a... Geronimo Allison. But again, they don't have anyone with any quickness. Oh! Hoo -hoo! What a play! God, Mahomes is balling out today. I don't think LaFleur would get fired if they go 8-8. Eight eight. The Packers just... They're not... They just don't change. Like, they gave McCarthy such a long leash. Like, they're not gonna. They're not gonna fire LaFleur after going 8 and 8. And I don't, like, as much crap as I give the Packers, like, they're still a good football team and their division isn't that good. Like, that's probably the floor, is 8 and 8, 7 and 9. I don't think they'll. I don't think they'd fire. I don't think they'd fire him after that. Mercedes Lewis is still a Packer. You know who the Packers need to sign is Delaney Walker. Lafleur's familiar with him. Had one of his best seasons with Lafleur, if my memory's correct. He's familiar with him. They have a desperate need at tight end. He's sitting right there. They have the cap space for it. Make it happen. I could get a little more excited about the Packers if they have Delaney Walker, because at least they have... At least they have someone in the short game that's a mismatch problem. I bet Mahomes gets three Super Bowls. That's my guess. But it's a dice roll. Oh, God. The stars need to align to win a Super Bowl. 
The stars aligned this year. Titans knocked out the Ravens, so they didn't have to deal with them. The Dolphins beat the Patriots, so they got a bye. They got healthy at the right time. Yeah, I do too. I, I think I would have gained a lot more respect for McCarthy if he if he stuck his nose out and said, hey, what the hell are we doing up, up there in the front office? Like, give me some help here. Like, we had great wide receivers for a long time, and then all of a sudden we just stopped adding wide receivers. Like, yeah, we don't necessarily need to, like, spend a first-round pick. You know, we got Adams, Jordy, Cobb. Like, we got all these guys from Michael Finley. Like, they were all mid-round picks. But after they got Devontae Adams in 2014, they literally were like, okay, we're, we're not going to bring in anybody. The only free agent they signed in the Mike McCarthy era, the only free agent wide receiver, this is literally it. Not... Oh my God, wow. Not talking about, you know, signing a guy to a 10 year or a 10, $10 million, three year, like, you know, big free agent contract. I'm literally just talking about picking up the phone, bringing in a wide receiver for a workout and making him your fifth wide receiver. Like that is a free agent signing. The only free agent wide receiver they signed in the entire Mike McCarthy era, the only one, literally one, James Jones who had already been on the team and was at the end of his career. That's the only free agent that they signed for Mike McCarthy. You can look it up, you can fact check, fact check me. It's ridiculous. And after Devontae Adams, they only spent like, the highest draft pick they spent on a wide receiver was like a fourth round pick on Jamon Moore. So McCarthy got stale, but my God, they did not give him much help. Oh my God, Mahomes is going off right now. <laughs> That's right, we signed the savior, Devin fucking Funches. And don't you forget it. Dude, Hoodie James Jones did go off that year. I'm not going to lie. Tempted to accept that just so I don't get, get another sack, but I don't I don't think he did anything to actually be offsides there. I um I think I saw that I'm heading into this game I was 11 sacks away from. We now reduce. Oh, what a kick! We now reduce injury if you get sacked more than 75 times. I think every sack you go over 75 up to. Up to 85, they reduce your quarterback's injury by 10. And Mahomes has been, he's like, I think he's now nine short of that. And we have two more games to play. So we got to be careful. Careful with our franchise quarterback here. Now, he did gain two injury at the bye week, so. At least there's that. Nope, nope, get back over there. You too. Oh god. Hello. Solomon Thomas is coming on lately. Do you do anything with RB overuse? Um, you are only allowed... Your running back can only get 80% of your team carries, otherwise your guy gets uh, suspended. Oh, 
that's a missed tackle. You gotta have some kind of a committee. And then you also, your team, you can't go over 50% running. You have to at least be a 50-50 team. And you can't go over 70% passing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, nice call, Goose. How high am I on Tanner Morgan? Like I tweeted, he was the single worst player on my draft board. Thoughts on Ben Baldwin? I'm sure he does good work. I'm not too familiar with him. I've seen his stuff. I don't know what expected points added actually means. His stuff pops up in my feed a few too many times every week for me to truly like him, but I'm sure he does good work. I have a really hard time believing that a single guy has come up with some magic metric and has evaluated every single game, including every scenario that matters, every little penalty holding call, every little thing going back to 2011 or whatever, or even later that can magically tell you how many expected points a quarterback has added to his team. Like that, Pro Football Focus as an entire company is trying as hard as we possibly can to figure that out. I have a very hard time believing that one single guy has gone back and watched every single snap of every single play going back to like 2007 and also come up with a magic formula I just, I don't know, man. And then for Twitter to take it as like objective truth, that if you're Ben Baldwin EPA is high, you're a really good quarterback. I just, it just doesn't do much for me. Get that, oh. I mean, running backs are pretty much useless, so can't really blame them for that one. Guy thinks teams should never run the football once. Yeah, that might be a little bit too far. Oh my God, CJ Anderson. I agree that running backs are extremely replaceable and for the most part should not be paid. Actually, pretty much always should not be paid. But um, I think there's still some value in the run game, especially if you don't have a great quarterback. Now, if you're the Green Bay Packers and you have Aaron Rodgers and you just drafted Jordan Love, who you hope is great, to double down and draft three offensive linemen and a running back and a fullback in the, on day two, that's, that's pretty fucking dumb. Like, if you have a quarterback that can whip the ball around efficiently, give him all the help he needs and let, let your team go to work. But if you're... Even, like, the Rams with Jared Goff, the Vikings with Kirk Cousins, like, even, like, those mid-tier quarterbacks, like, I understand some of the desire to run the ball and kind of limit... I'm going for this. Get it, Ramsey. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. Kentrell Ramsey.
I should have hit that slant. That slant was about to be a touchdown, wasn't it? You're right, dude. My Travis Kelsey never would have caught that ball. The problem with Josiah DeGuara is even if he becomes Kyle Juszczyk, that's still not worth the third, third round pick. And that's a huge if. Like, I don't think he's as fast as Kyle Juszczyk. I don't think he's as good with the ball in his hands as Kyle Juszczyk. I don't think he's as nasty of a blocker as Kyle Juszczyk. Like, that's a huge if. In reality, he's probably going to be a minor upgrade to what they had in da Danny Vitale last year. And I hope he proves me wrong about that, but... Does Rodney Smith have a shot in the NFL? Rodney Smith fits the mold of, like, your Thomas Rawls... Robert Kelly, big bodied, scrappy power back. He's got a chance to like stick somewhere. Alex Collins, he fits that mold, but he's got a ton of um, injuries in his past. He's already like 24. I don't think he has much of a future, but he could have like one fun year. Did he sign somewhere? I thought J.J. Taylor was a lot better than Adrian Killens. Killens to me was just a track guy. Whereas J.J. Taylor had some, he had some football acumen to him. What's up, Lisa B? How's Teddy doing? Can Teddy make a quick, uh, a quick cameo before this game's all done? Killens will forever be a uh, a TFG legend because of the Jags rebuild. Hello, Teddy. Hi. Hi. Say hi to the chat. They miss you. Oh. Hi, chat. Hi. Did you get some good sleep today? Huh? The chat says they love you. Rodney Smith signed with the Panthers. I kind of like that. See, that's what I... Like, I could see Rodney Smith being, like, the... Um, who was the Bears' power back behind Matt Forte for all that time? Oh, give me another pick. Oh, jeez. I've never seen that animation before. Michael Bush, was it? I could see I could see him becoming Michael Bush to Christian McCaffrey's Matt Forte. <laughs> you are a bear the size of a cat. That's very accurate.
Oh, God. You hate to see it. I'm sorry, Goose. I should have just swatted at that thing. That was... That was ugly. Alright, let's get out of here. Sorry, Goose. I look forward to you threatening to quit in the chat like you always do this time of year. You didn't deserve that last pick, though. You did not deserve that last pick. That's just my third string safety, too. Like, I don't give a shit about Tracy Walker getting a pick. All right, well, GG's, everyone. This season just keeps rolling. Our offense is starting to click. We did lose Miko Hardman, though. We'll, uh, we'll get out of here and see what the damage is on that. A shoulder tear, I think, is usually like two to four weeks. I'm hoping for the best here. We do have a first round bye, so. Let me tell Goose, good game. Do I have an Instagram? Yeah, I think it's Marcus underscore Whitman or Whitman underscore Marcus, one of the two. God, my run game though has just been awful. Kentrell Ramsey though, what a day. Did we really give up that many sacks? Oh no, we gave up four sacks. Jeez, Austin Jackson, not a good day. Rousseau went to work. All right, let's uh, let's see what this injury is. Hoping for the best here. Mahomes did get an upgrade. Injury. Three weeks, so he'll be back for the playoffs. We'll miss him. Yeah, he'll be back in time for our first playoff game, so that's not too bad. All right, Mahomes. I guess I'll go Improviser. And then Darren Lee just keeps getting better. Uh, I don't think the Packers could get a new refrigerator for Jamal Williams. He's a fun player, but he is a complete dime a dozen backup running back. Smart player, great teammate, not worth a literal damn in the NFL. He'll play out his year and then get a nice like two year, $5 million contract and then slowly fade off into the sunlight. That's, that's the unfortunate fate of Jamal Williams. Third string running back this year, gets about 20 touches and then probably get signed somewhere as a guy to compete for a starting job, generate some fantasy buzz and then go his own way. I think we can scout running backs, I'm not sure. Uh, we started letting guys get dev because we turned um, we turned abilities off, but we were originally containing it. We weren't letting people get superstar through scenarios. You could get star through it, but not superstar. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, definitely going to keep at the roster here this evening. Um, I'll have some, you know, it, it, it'll be done tomorrow. It'll be done tomorrow. Um, still a lot to do, but that's the, uh, that's the verdict. All right. Peace out, everyone. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you for joining me. I'll upload this whole stream up on my second YouTube channel, TFG Plays. So definitely go check that out. Right there. Whoops. You can catch up on all the all the games, all the streams, recap this whole thing, all that. Uh, but yeah, peace out, everyone. We'll see you later.